Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Stephen Wessner. I'm CEO of Predictive ROI and founder of our signature event, Predictive ROI Live, where over two and a half days, we bring together the world's leading experts in digital marketing and business leadership and share those insights with business owners so they can achieve phenomenal growth guaranteed. And I have the honor and privilege to be with one of our experts today. His name is Avinash Kashik, and he is the digital marketing evangelist for Google and co-founder of Market Motive. He's been a wonderful mentor to me. I've learned so much from him, and he's a great friend. So thank you, Avinash, for joining us today very much. Thank you, Stephen. Great to be here. Thank you. So um, let's start with some of the questions I've prepared for the interview. So if you could give us just an overview of the definition, your definition of analytics, that would be a great place to start. There are hundreds of them, right? <laughs> my, my favorite definition is data, data that you use to make smarter decisions about your business. That's, that's as simple as that. Okay. I think I quickly sort of break it into two components, the practice of analytics. Uh, one is the boring part and one is the interesting part. Mm. And the interesting part I define as the business of data analysis. So a, and, and that's when you actually get into the data and make love to it and try and figure out if you can tease out something really interesting that adds value to your business. And the boring part is the data reporting part mm. where we sometimes falsely believe as businesses that the sheer act of collecting data and puking it out on people somehow makes our businesses smart. So when you think about analysis, analytics, think of those two things, right? Data reporting and data analysis. And data reporting is a, one of those painful things in life you have to do, spend 20% of your time on it. But data analysis is where the world of analytics comes alive and adds value to any business on the planet. Okay, so, so let's put it into the construct of, of me as a business owner or those business owners who are watching this video. So what are the key insights or data points or the, the metrics that I should be looking at? What should I really care about pulling out of my analytics? Absolutely. Now let's, let's, look at the, let's look at three quick different examples. So a lot of companies have no idea if their marketing is bringing them the best possible people to their digital existence. Mm. Or, or when a person arrives at their door, in this case, that says, let's say their website or mobile site or desktop, doesn't matter is that, is the greeting really great? Do, do you say hello very nicely? And so I tell people that if you're starting the business of analytics, one of the first metrics you should look at is one of my favorite metrics, it's called bounce rates. And the way that I define bounce rate is from a customer perspective, it measures the following phenomenon. I came, I puked, I left, right? So, so it's this really interesting metric that's available in Adobe Site Catalyst, in Google Analytics, Web Trends, any tool you have access to. And it actually immediately shows you, are you bringing the right people who, to your website? And how many of those puke and leave right away? Because mm. it turns out they're not the right people. You're selling underwear and your site is, and, and your ads were targeting people who want tires. Stupid. <laughs> or on the other side, you are selling underwear. I do want underwear. And I came and you have the world's most hideous, unsexy page. Like, I'm out, right? Yeah. And, and so it's such a small, tiny little thing that very quickly helps you diagnose that something is wrong. That is what I mean by very quick, actionable analytics. Here's another example. Yesterday, I was really worried about how to go and find the weakness of my competitors so I could destroy them, right? Just crush them to death. <laughs> and in the real world, it's really hard to do, right? But what I ended up doing is I just typed in www.compete.com. Mm. Uh, Compete is, uh, offers some free analytics reports um, and a lot of them for the paid people who pay for it. And you type in the name of your company and type in the name of your competitor. And in like a few seconds, it helps you understand what is the traffic patterns on both these websites, yours and your direct competitor. It tells you what keywords drive traffic to them. It tells you what display campaigns they're running that drives traffic to them. It helps you understand what the age, education levels are people who go to your competitor versus you. It actually even tells you on this one keyword that you're fighting head to head, how much are they more effective than you? Oh, what are, what are the affiliates that are really working great for you? And, and think about it, like at the end of like 20 minutes, I have understood what my competitor is doing that is working really well for them and what I am doing that is not working well or working well. Now this context is really hard to find in the real world. And yet, when it comes to digital, we have access to our competitors' data on our fingertips. 
And many can, we can use that to be much smarter. Mm. Or my last favorite example is possibly my favorite metric on the whole wide world. I think in my first book, I said, if I had to go to a deserted island, I would not take Angelina Jolie, right? <laughs> I, would, I would take this metric. <laughs> and the metric is a task completion rate. And, and what happens is, um, after people visit your website, and when they leave, uh, you ask them three simple questions. And you say, why were you here? Doesn't matter what we are selling, but why did you come here? The second question is, whatever you were here for, did you complete your task? And if you did not, why not? And, and think of the amazing things that you get out of it. Mm. First thing is, you understand the difference between why you created the website and why people actually came. <laughs> and that there's a dissonance there. And there always is, no matter how smart you think you are. There always is. Then the customers tell you how much you suck. I love it, right? Because they'll say, oh, no, I came here to buy. My task completion is 20%. So 80% of the people who came to buy could not complete their task. Like you want to kill yourself at that point. That's good information. And then, the, and then in the customer's own voice, they tell you what to fix. Oftentimes, when it comes to the context of predictive, when it comes to all this data, we tend to think of it in terms of quantitative analysis. Mm. I am a huge fan of qualitative analysis. And so my third example is not trying to get at what is happening, but why it is happening. And usually we have such amazing confidence in Google Analytics, we have such amazing confidence inside Catalyst that we think we have everything. But all of that gives us the what, it doesn't give us the why. And so my third example is all about the why. What can we understand from our customer in their own voice and words and qualitatively that we can then use to go improve our business. So these are like three different examples that really show you the depth and breadth of, of data you have access to mm. and the kinds of super smart business decisions you can make, at least when it comes to digital. It's just, it's just mind blowing. So that, that's really, really good stuff. So let, let's go back to, to bounce rate a little bit and because you know that's one of my favorites too. <laughs> um, so you know I've taken from uh, your lessons before 30% baseline uh, is a great place to go, but if we can strive to go deeper, that's great. But, but, but why do you think 30% um, is a, you know, an intermediate or a goal place where, where somebody should start? Yeah, no, I, 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 the way I tell people is, look, if, if you're doing anything over 60%, then you really suck. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, what the hell is happening there, right? Uh, because remember, a lot of people say, no, 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 people came to my site, they see one page, and they find all the information, and if they leave, that's fine. Well, my question to them is, how did you make money? Like, unless you're running a nonprofit entity, which I, I, I adore, thank you for running nonprofit, but as long as you're not running a nonprofit entity, how did you make money? The person has to do something, right, so that you make money. So I tell people, if, if, if it's over 60%, like there's something majorly wrong, you should think about it. Anything over 40% like starts to worry me, especially if I'm spending money on campaigns. If I'm spending money, I don't want four out of, 10 people to leave without doing anything. That seems criminal. But you can't get a bounce rate to 0%. I, I've had the privilege of analyzing many kinds of websites. And some of the websites I've analyzed have very attractive content that is only targeted to certain audiences of a certain age. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even with that fantastic content, you can't get it to 0%. Right? <laughs> And so there will, you will always get a certain number of people who will leave right away. There just isn't a fit, or they just don't like the page, and it's okay. And so I, I try to come up with some space, so it's like 30% seems like if you, if you get at that, that's good enough. There are bigger problems for us to worry about. And that's how I sort of arrived at that number. But for the most part, what you want to look out for are big outliers. Like if you have a really high one, you should look about it, think about it, and focus on that. Or, or for your campaigns, your affiliate campaigns where you spend money, your paid search campaigns where you spend money, your email marketing campaigns where you're spending money, your display campaigns where you're spending money, the ads that I'm running on social media, on Facebook, mm -hmm. all of the places where you pay, you are actually paying money for every single person to come. You don't want seven out of 10 people to just leave instantly, right? That's, that's insane. So you should go fix that. 